Through this video series, I am going to try and bridge artificial intelligence with Vedic algorithms, whom I refer to as cosmic or Brahma intelligence. My main focus would be on applications, especially in healthcare through Ayurveda. Being a novel project, I would hence request all of you to watch these videos without skipping. Artificial intelligence is the science of training machine to imitate or reproduce human tasks. Our brain works effortlessly and seamlessly to calculate the world around us. Artificial intelligence is the concept that a machine can do the same if it can be given the cognitive ability of a human brain to perform functions such as perceiving, learning, reasoning and solving problems. The term was invented in 1950s when scientists began to explore how computers could solve problems on their own. Most of our smartphones or even the internet uses artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence works by training the machine to make a better version of itself each day as it learns from its previous tasks and execution seem as a human brain. For example, when we first learn to play a piano and each day as we practice, we become better at it. So how is a machine made to learn from itself? Basically, it is done by implementing a brain in it which works similar to a human brain or mimics it. It's learning from examples as we humans do. It self teaches itself to filter inputs through layers to learn how to predict and classify information. This method is called deep learning. The human brain processes information through a chain of neurons communicating with each other known as a human neural network. In the human brain, there are about 100 billion neurons. Each neuron connects to about 100,000 of its neighbors. The neuron has a body, dendrite and an exon. The signal from one neuron travels down the axon and transfers to the dendrite of the next neuron. That connection where the signal passes is called a synapse. Deep learning attempts to mimic this activity happening in the layers of neurons in the neocortex of human brain, literally by creating an artificial neural network and at a level that works for individual machines. You get input from observation and you put your input into one layer. That layer creates an output which in turn becomes the input for the next layer and so on. This happens over and over until your final output signal. Think of the input layer as your senses, the things you see, smell and feel. For example, let us take coffee. We identify it mostly by smell, taste and looks. And each one of these parameters are individual, means you can identify coffee just by looking at it, smelling it or tasting it. So let us take the example of smell. Imagine a blind person smells coffee for the first time. The brain inputs it as a signal and stores it as a distinct smell. When he smells it again, the signal is processed. If there is a match, the output is delivered as coffee. As this person keeps on drinking coffee, over time this process continues and the brain learns and develops more refinement towards coffee's intricate properties. For example, it slowly develops awareness of not just the coffee as end product, but the beans used, the roast they have, etc. This is how intelligence develops, layered on retention, recall and application of data, corroborated as the Dhriti and Smriti algorithms of fate. This algorithmic input-output mechanism is the basis of artificial neural networks. I will be covering this Vedic neural network based on the Dhriti and Smriti in a separate video. We can ascertain from this example that to create an artificial intelligence, we require a machine or hardware which can process parallel computations much as the brain does. Data which is retained, recalled and applied through universally progressive algorithms to arrive at all possible conclusions and results. This allows the computer to self-teach itself, much as how we self-teach ourselves, and open up immense possibilities of neural networks which we as humans fail to do on individual terms due to our social, moral, physical and spiritual inhibitions, which forces us to think on linear terms and not expansive as Vedas indicate. If you are interested, you can read or watch YouTube videos about how artificial neural networks work and create precise outputs over time. 
This video is not about artificial intelligence, but how its concepts are similar to Vedic transmissions. So now, let us take a small example on which we can build the propositions. For now, I will take a simple example of a clay pot. Clay pots come in many shapes. These shapes depend upon the creativity of the potter who can imagine and create shapes. Hence, we cannot put a finite number on the output that only this many shapes can be created by all potters of the world. We very well know imagining a shape and creating it are two different things. I can design a shape, but maybe I may not have skills to manually make it. Similarly, I may be excellent at making shapes from designs handed to me. If we have to create an artificial intelligence system which can design and create various pots from clay, we have to train it to become a potter and a designer. Now logically, design can be anything on paper, but to shape and create it in real is a skill. And hence logically, the AI system first needs to learn and master it and then work out designs. For that, we first have to understand how a potter creates a design through clay, his base neural network. A mind may initially go to the tools and techniques he uses to shape pots, but that's on secondary level. He uses them after knowing precisely what and when to use. So at primordial level, how does he do it? How just by looking or imagining a design, his neural network confirms the reality of that shape? The answer is, he understands the inherent properties or atomic reality of clay, which enables him to create any shape from it. So to make the machine think like a potter, we must create a neural network where we first train the computer to understand the properties of clay, of how it can be shaped in various forms. We can give it some reference shapes as example. By understanding the universal properties of clay, the machine each day will first perfect to create those shapes and then slowly we will learn to create different shapes much like a potter. By training the computer to accept the properties of clay as the fundamental reality, it slowly teaches itself about its innate applicative possibilities. Now look at this verse from Chandogya Upanishad. This implies that pot being a mere product of clay does not have a separate identity. It's just the clay. And if we know the clay, we can know all things shaped out of it. Don't worry, here I'm not going to give a discourse on metaphysics but would like to point to the concepts of universal algorithms Ved give us through which we know nature of creation, past, present and future. This I call as Brahma intelligence or cosmic intelligence, the neural network of cosmos. Right now, hold on to the term algorithm as standalone. I'll explain it a bit later. Now let me elaborate a bit further by introducing two terms which will lay the foundations of how these algorithms can be used towards artificial intelligence. The terms are Satyam and Rhythm. Though both of these words are used synonymously, there is a difference, on whose basis the entire foundations of Brahma or cosmic intelligence lies. Let me elaborate a bit further. Have a look at these verses from Rig and Atharva Ved. In brief, they indicate that Satyam is truth and Rhythm is the law that governs the working of that truth. Here the word truth is not taken as comparative like my truth and your truth which is relative, but eternal truth that we experience. Let me try to simplify it. Look at this Vaisheshik Sutra, which translates loosely as objects stay in hand due to their conjunction with the hand. When the conjunction is lost, the object falls down due to its own weight. The Vaisheshik Sutra, earliest documented around 500 BC, in brief are explaining us the universal rhythm or law of gravity. Much as later attributed to Sir Isaac Newton in the late 16th century with the famous example of apple falling from the tree. In terms of Satyam and Rhythm, the apple here is Satyam. Its remaining conjoined to the tree is Satyam. Its falling down is also Satyam because we experience it. Why it falls down is rhythm, the law of gravity. We can decipher that the truth of the apple joined to the tree and its falling down which appears as common phenomenon to many. The laws governing these actions, the rhythm, were self-revealed to Vaisheshik. Due to the way they programmed their neural networks based on algorithms of their philosophy called Darshan. 
Darshans are exponential algorithms through which we understand the immense possibilities of cosmic creations. I will try and make separate video about Darshan, cosmic and artificial intelligence. Similarly, clay is empirically real or satya, and the pot which is a modification of clay is also empirically real or satya, as we can see and experience both. But the manner in which the clay was shaped to pot is its rhythm. The universal law which when understood can project innate possibilities. So each manifestation in the cosmos we experience as truth or satya themselves reveal their rhythm or the order in which they are created, destroyed or interact with each other. These universal rhythms of all cosmic interconnectedness from micro to macro, zero to infinity have already been put forth in the Vedas and are there to be found for ones who can observe. Ved, Yog, Tantra and Jyotish have all expounded cosmic creations and their algorithmic interconnectedness, the Satyam and Rhythm. The importance of Rhythm or emphasis on algorithms can be understood from the fact that in the Rig Ved, the term Rhythm appears as many as 390 times. It has been characterized as the one concept which pervades the whole of Rig Vedic thought. I requested you all to hold on to the term algorithm because there was no straight definition then. I can now elaborate by saying that the term algorithm which I use in this context refers to an applicative method which is based on collection of universal or cosmic laws to arrive at possibilities and probabilities in an exponential manner from micro to macro. These algorithms are known as Siddhanta. Etymologically, it is a conjoint of two words, Siddha which means perfection established or an undisputable result and anta which means end or nothing more. So Siddhanta means cosmic algorithms or laws which are perfect, which can never be challenged or refuted, past, present or future. For example, the Tridho Siddhanta in Vedas. One must note that Siddhantas are different from theorems, postulates or hypotheses which are challenged, refined, refuted or accepted over time. These are known as Vad, which means this can be discussed. For example, Vivarta Vad and Parinam Vad in relation to Advait. There are different layers to Siddhanta in conjunction with topic of interest, which I'll explain in future videos. Well, if you're still with me, you can now imagine the immense possibility of an artificial intelligence system that is based on these Siddhantas, a conglomeration of neural networks which each day builds a better version of itself. We may even ask then, can the artificial intelligence developed on these algorithms one day can answer the quintessential paradox of all Vedic, Tantric and Yogic crux? What was there when there was nothing? Well, that's not the scope of these videos or series as I look to concentrate on application in real life scenarios and not dwell on metaphysics. In the next video, I'll continue this discussion by citing examples from Ayurvedic algorithms and its applications. Those who found this video helpful, do read about basic artificial intelligence and neural networks and try to relate to them with certain siddhantas you may find interest. Those who are into programming, I hope this inspires you to create functional artificial intelligence models for Veda and especially Ayurveda and help enrich and unleash its healing powers in the upcoming era.